Good morning. We'll begin with these two charts, which are self-explanatory. China's per capita energy consumption is now on par with the European Union. The typical Chinese uses as much energy as the typical Western European. The bottom chart is the cost of electricity across the world. The darker the color, the more expensive electricity costs. People living in Western Europe, Australia, and Japan see the highest electric bills. China's electricity costs around 15 cents per kilowatt hour, which is about half what American consumers pay and even less than Canada. These two charts shouldn't be possible. And the reason is that China's energy profile is quite poor, especially compared to North America. This is an old report. It's from 20 years ago, June 2005, but it is typical of the analysis on China until very recently. The conclusions drawn by energy experts were that China has a low ceiling for industrial and economic development because of energy constraints here. China is heavily reliant on coal and is the world's largest producer. There are also major importers of oil. They don't have nearly as much as they need. And as of 2005, they were the second largest producer of electricity. There was a persistent supply demand gap and China's heavy reliance on foreign suppliers makes China uniquely vulnerable to currency fluctuations, business cycles, geopolitics. I will highlight this section now. The balance between China's energy supply and demand is only possible because China's per capita consumption is low. The country is starved for energy, and in the years leading up to this report, China experienced shortfalls and blackouts, which negatively impacted industrial production. They concluded here that the only reason that China was able to produce most of the electricity that it needed was because Chinese people don't use very much, but now they do. That was in 2005, and we could have shared any one of a dozen other studies that all said the same thing. China has severe disadvantages in energy, which would keep a lid on industrial production and on economic growth. And per capita, it was unthinkable that China could be at the same level as in other developed countries, especially at lower prices compared to Norway or to Canada. But here we are. What's more, China's low prices for energy, especially compared to Europe, are resulting in tough choices being made by German companies. More than half of Germany's biggest companies are considering moving production out of Germany, especially the firms in the energy intensive industries. That's even causing headaches in Washington, who is pushing German companies to divest from China and from Russia. But those companies are going the other way. BASF is one of the biggest chemical companies in the world and they already have 30 plants here. And BASF is building a new facility in China that will be as big as their headquarters in Germany. Their CEO says that the company's China divisions are making money, while in Europe they're losing money. Name me one investment in Europe where we can make money, he says. Volkswagen has the same problem. In Europe, the energy costs are too high, labor costs are too high, and VW needs sales in China to subsidize their European operations. So China has come a long way in a short time, and lots of things had to go their way. They did develop deep diplomatic and economic ties with energy producers, Russia, the Middle East, and Venezuela, most notably. China also built out its energy portfolio to include massive volumes of renewable power, which is domestically produced and raises the ceiling again, on the energy that's available to them. And that also reduces the cost. Those were crucial, and they go a long way to explain how they were able to dramatically increase energy production and usage while also cutting costs. It's been remarkable, this from PV Magazine, which shows here how important solar power has been in China's energy mix. China's massive increase in solar capacity keeps power prices low compared to Europe and the United States. China's end users pay less than half what Europeans or Australians do, and that is a key advantage in global trade. China has more consumers of electricity than Europe and the United States combined, 
and it would be a historic achievement if the prices stay low as more renewables come on stream. And as we can see in this chart, China is now the number one consumer of wind power at the far right column. And here they're number one in hydropower and number one in solar. All of that has been great and crucial to how China's gotten here. But it doesn't come close to answering the question because many of the problems that analysts pointed to in 2005 are still here. And we got a great heads up on this part of the story from a viewer in Ireland who's an expert in renewable energy markets. He forwarded a bunch of links to us and told us to look at the power transmission problem. China has revolutionized the transmission of energy over vast distances, and that's all happened since 2005. UHV are ultra high voltage lines for transmitting power. The principle here is that as higher voltages of power are sent down the lines, the marginal cost of doing so goes down. This also means less waste due to heat loss and greater efficiency. Shikensen is the Chinese name taken from the Japanese name of their bullet trains, which become more efficient as the speeds go up. The fastest way to supply electric power is not to produce it in nearby power plants, but rather by wire. And here is the problem that China had in 2005 and still has today. China's natural resources are in the north and west, while China's population centers are here in the east and the south. And 20 years ago, China was suffering from chronic power outages. A huge chunk of the country's logistics was devoted to just moving raw materials around to generate electricity, and they couldn't keep up. In 2006, it became a national level strategy to develop China's UHV transmission. Their first project went from Shanxi, the biggest coal producing region, to Hubei. So again, in the past, the idea would be to haul coal from Shanxi province to Hubei, where it would be burned to generate electricity. With UHV, the Chinese power grid operators could burn the coal in Shanxi and just send the electricity to Hubei. Lots of other projects came online and the biggest one delivered hydroelectric power from the Jinsha River across eight regions to Shanghai. And that UHV line provides sufficient power for 40% of Shanghai's electricity demand. Now China's got 38 of these UHV lines online, and they now include wind and solar sources of power. UHV was not invented here, but China pushed it to the next level and developed many new technologies and applications for it. And here is the wind and solar again. China is a vast country. It's still daylight in Xinjiang and Tibet and Sichuan when it's dark here in the east. So solar projects there can provide power that's used here. And wind is always blowing somewhere, and that means turbines are spinning and can provide power to places where it's not. China shares a common problem with other large countries, populous countries. The high hurdle is cost. These projects are very expensive to build and to maintain. And in the case of the United States, where we're mainly self-sufficient in energy, we don't approach the problem with the same urgency that China does or India. But there are lots of challenges on the regulatory side because of the enormous distances that need to be covered with lots of jurisdictions in between who need to approve and provide funding. Brazil, on the other hand, has an energy profile and geography that's similar in many ways to China's. Brazil is a huge country. It's bigger than the lower 48, the continental United States. And in Brazil, hydropower is generated far away from their population centers. 2,000 kilometer distance, about 1,200 miles. The Belo Monte UHV project was developed by some of the same Chinese companies that built out UHV here and now serves 22 million customers in Brazil. And India too is building out their network of UHV lines. This is the terraces in Hebei province. Be good.
Thank you.